The worlds of Minecraft are sprawling and complex. They're inhabited by many different types of creatures and mobs. Some of these are more advanced than others, such as the villagers and their arch enemies, the illagers. But there are a few mobs that are different in seemingly fundamental ways. And perhaps no mob is more confusing and unsettling than the Wither. A player could complete the entire game without seeing one, yet the Wither is undeniably important. But how? What's its purpose? And why is it so unique compared to other mobs? Welcome to Deep Dive, a series where I explore some of the strangest and most obscure mysteries in games, such as Minecraft. Tonight, we're going to take a look at one of the two boss mobs. We'll examine the clues, both subtle and hidden in plain sight. Hopefully, we can learn about what the Wither is and begin to put the puzzle pieces together. I should say that this video will be more understandable if you've seen the other Minecraft Deep Dives, but I'll do my best to catch you up if you haven't. With that out of the way, join me for a dive beneath the waves. Withers are constructed using materials found exclusively in the nether, including wither skeleton skulls and soul sand. It's worthwhile to see if we can understand what these materials are and how they fit into the overall context of the world. The nether is an interesting place for several reasons. One such oddity is that it seems as though not all of its inhabitants are natives. Some came from other places. A good clue for this is fire resistance. Many nether mobs have this, indicating that they are adapted to the harsh conditions. For example, blazes shoot fireballs and are even made of fire. Gas are also immune to lava. Magma cubes thrive in the brutal basalt deltas biomes, using their jumping abilities to navigate the stalagmites. Even striders, although passive, clearly belong here. They walk on lava, and they're cold and shivery when on solid ground. However, there are mobs that seem to be foreign. One example is the piglins. Survival is a struggle for them. They're not immune to fire, and they live in decrepit structures, unable to or unwilling to repair them. Furthermore, they must engage in dangerous hunting parties just to survive. The Endermen also don't belong to the Nether. If you've seen my previous deep dives, you'll know why. I'll explain more about the Endermen later on. There's yet another mob that's not native, and that's one we need to take a closer look at, skeletons. Minecraft has many undead mobs. All of these come with an implicit truth. The undead mob was living at one point. The overworld contains several mobs like this, mostly zombies and skeletons. The fact that there are so many of them seems to imply that at one point there were far more living creatures than we see today. So who were these zombies and skeletons when they were alive? They weren't villagers, as they have their own zombie variant. They weren't piglins for the same reason. And they probably weren't endermen either. Physiologically, they're just so different. I don't see how any of them would fit with an enderman shape. So we're left with one option. These undead mobs belong to a species that no longer exists in its living form. These are the ancient builders, and they were similar in size and shape to the player. I've talked about them before. There's evidence that they used the sunken ships and constructed the monuments. They've left behind a lot of loot as well. Something catastrophic happened in the overworld, however, an event which is beyond the scope of this video. For now, it's enough to know that the ancient builders existed at one point. All of this evidently happened in the overworld. That's where most of these mobs are found. A mass extinction event would be unlikely to be interdimensional, as the three dimensions are just so much different from one another, with very few gates connecting them. So it's somewhat intriguing that we occasionally find skeletons in the nether. Deepening the mystery, there are two different types, standard skeletons and wither skeletons, which are a larger variant that can cause a devastating wither effect. Clearly, something strange is going on here. We'll start by examining the normal skeleton, and then see if we can learn about the wither skeleton. Just to avoid confusion, I'm going to be talking with respect to the nether. Some of the stuff I say won't be true for the overworld. Skeletons spawn primarily in the Soul Sand Valley biome. They're not the only bones here. We can find huge nether fossils buried as well. It seems as though there's something special about Soul Sand that causes skeletons to appear nearby. Let's take a closer look and see if something jumps out at us. It's pretty well known that the texture of the Soul Sand block shows several screaming souls. But is it possible that it somehow literally contains souls? There's actually evidence for this. Boots with the soul speed enchantment allow the player to walk quickly over soul sand and soul soil. In doing so, there's a unique particle effect that's produced from the ground. Some sort of being with a face writhes and turns as if it has escaped a trap. It starts color brown, probably coated in sand. But as it rises, it frees itself and reveals its true color, a beautiful light blue. Then it fades away. This could actually be a soul. The only other ghost that we see in Minecraft is a Vex, which has a similar blue color. 
so it would seem as though there really are souls trapped in the sand. What's more powerful though is that we've learned that there's a way to release them. In doing so, they're converted to actual work. The player can literally move faster. Souls have some sort of energy to them, and there are ways to put it to use. I'm going to call this effect soul energy, as the souls appear to be the primary source of its power. There are some other phenomena that can be explained using soul energy. Let's look at soul fire. It burns forever on soul sand, and it's also hotter than normal fire, as evidenced by its increased damage. It has a familiar blue color, the color of souls. Is this fire a result of souls being burned, releasing soul energy as heat and light? Another mob has figured this out, the piglins. The piglins avoid all types of soul fire, including lanterns and campfires. It's not because they might get burned, regular fire will also do that. I think it's superstition. Somehow they know that soul fire is powered by actual souls. Understandably, they want to stay well away from that. And can you blame them? I would do the same. Soul energy has even more uses. For example, nether warts can only be placed on soul sand. They're certainly not getting their energy from the sun. They grow equally regardless of environmental factors. Therefore, they must be powered by the soul energy from the sand itself. Nether warts are useful. Almost all potions require them. There's an argument to be made that at least some of the energy powering a health potion is ultimately soul energy. This brings me to an idea that I've talked about before. Minecraft clearly has some type of magic. We can enchant armor, for example. One way to interpret Minecraft magic is that it's fundamentally based on death and destruction. Enchanting requires experience, and the best way to get that is by killing other mobs. The player gains experience through death, and it loses it by enchanting. Like real life energy, it always balances out. It's not created or destroyed, it just takes different forms. This would presumably be true for soul energy as well. So the next question is, where did these souls come from? The answer seems obvious, skeletons. Soul sand valleys are infested with them. We've already established that the ancient builders are overworld skeletons, but we do know that they did exist in the nether at one point. We can find items like horse armor in the nether fortresses. The builders died, leaving their soul energy in the sand scattered about with undead skeletons. So what happened? To figure it out, we need to look at the wither skeleton, since it gives us some important clues. Wither skeletons are scary. They're tall, and they move quickly, attacking the player with the sword. Their signature is a brutal effect known as withering. When afflicted, a player's hearts turn black and begin to disintegrate. Withering is a strange phenomenon. It's different from poison as it can kill the player, and only mobs that can cause it are immune. Webster's Dictionary defines wither as to lose vitality, force, or freshness. I'm going to propose something here that may initially seem wrong, but hopefully it'll make sense by the end of this video. The withering effect is the conversion of health to soul energy. The wither effect extracts soul energy from a being. Their life force is lost, but soul energy is produced. It's most often captured in soul sand, which acts as soul energy sinks, storing vast amounts of it. But why? Why do the wither skeletons do this? There's one more element that we still need to discuss, and it's the most important of them all. Now that we have a basic understanding of soul energy, it's time to investigate the wither. Withers are built using two materials, soul sand and wither skeleton skulls. Upon construction, the wither spawns and begins powering up. After a few seconds, it starts its rampage, firing skulls that cause large explosions. It's a very challenging fight, maybe even harder than the ender dragon. The wither's attacks aren't random. It specifically targets other mobs, mobs that are alive. It won't attack anything undead. When one of the skulls kills a mob, it places a wither rose on the ground, if possible. In certain cases, wither skeletons can spawn on wither roses. What we're seeing is a life cycle. The wither produces roses, which can in turn create wither skeletons, who could eventually be used to make another wither. But this only tells half of the story. To really see what's going on, we need to look at the wither from a soul energy perspective. Let's assume that the wither status effect is in fact draining life force. The wither causes the wither effect on nearby mobs. That soul energy needs to go somewhere, and the rose eventually uses it to produce a wither skeleton. This offers a substantial improvement in soul energy generation capabilities, as wither skeletons can move around and seek out mobs. They do this as much as possible, slowly building up reserves of soul energy. When a wither is constructed, that soul energy is put to use. Wither skulls suck it out of the sand all at once, and the vast amounts of stored energy creates the wither. It uses this energy to attack with explosions. Some of these will kill mobs, dropping roses and continuing the cycle. However, not all of the wither's soul energy is used to attack. When the wither is eventually killed, it drops a nether star. 
This is like a soul energy diamond, an item which has an extremely dense concentration of the soul energy from the wither. There's only one known use for the nether star, to craft a beacon. The color of the beacon is interesting. Once again, it's the same light blue that we keep finding, the color of souls. The beacon is powered by soul energy from the nether star, and it's very useful. It can apply a wide variety of positive status effects on a player. It could be thought of as fundamentally similar to a potion, although much more powerful. Remember, potions are made using nether warts, which also require soul energy. This soul energy cycle seems to make sense, but there's still something that's not quite right, which is the fact that the wither must be built by someone. In that sense, it really feels unnatural. Without external intervention to keep it going, the cycle would die off. No withers means no roses and no wither skeletons. It doesn't feel like something that would just happen in nature, more like something that was created artificially. Fair warning, from this point onwards, things are gonna get pretty speculative. I'm gonna make a bit of a leap here. But if we read between the lines of what we've seen so far, there's at least a chance that what I'm about to say is correct. So take it with a grain of salt. Throughout these deep dive videos, I've slowly been developing the lore of Minecraft. And in my opinion, the Endermen are the most important mob of them all. I'll give you a quick recap of what we've discovered so far. It appears as though the Endermen began in the end before discovering portal technology and sending a few Endermen to the overworld. Unfortunately, they were trapped with no way to return. Eventually, these few made it to the Nether and found that Blaze Powder could power Eyes of Ender, allowing them to return to the end. As the Endermen studied the Nether, they realized that Blazes only spawn in certain areas. There were also Wither Roses here, which made traversing these places dangerous. Since the Endermen were mainly interested in getting blaze rods, they cleared out the nether roses and began construction on huge fortresses, high above the lava lakes. However, what they didn't realize was that the intense power and usefulness of blaze rods came at a cost. The wither roses that they removed weren't the problem, they were a symptom of something more deeply wrong with these areas. As they constructed their fortresses, they found that a new type of enemy would spawn, wither skeletons, with a brutal, life-draining wither attack. As blazes continued to appear, so did wither skeletons, picking off the unsuspecting mob and killing them with the withering effect. Soon, the Endermen began to realize that the wither skeletons were closely connected to the blazes. The energy for the powerful blaze rods came from the wither skeletons. They had unknowingly stumbled upon soul energy. The value of blaze rods was so great, however, that they chose to deal with the skeletons rather than tear down their fortresses. At least these skeletons were constrained in one place. However, there were more than just Endermen using the fortresses. The ancient builders also were there. Maybe they even helped construct the fortress. There's evidence in other places that Endermen and ancient builders learned from each other, such as the similarity between sunken ships and in ships. The builders also chose to use these fortresses to harvest nether warts for potion brewing. If there's one trait we've seen about the builders, it's that they like to think big. They began to wonder about the nature of this soul energy trade. Blaze rods and nether warts were clearly useful, was it possible to harness this energy without the danger of wither skeletons running around? Maybe there was some sort of way to obtain a vast amount of soul energy all at once, instead of needing to slowly build it up over time. This research eventually led to the design of the wither. The builders hoped that the wither skeleton souls and soul sand would react in such a way that the stored energy would be released all at once, ready for the taking. They drew up schematics for the wither. Then one day, they constructed it. But the builders didn't realize the true power of soul energy. Sure, another star was produced, but with a huge caveat. It was hidden inside of the Wither, a shockingly powerful mob that took the builders off guard. They'd accomplished their goal of concentrated soul energy, but they'd done it too well. Some of the energy gained sentience. In the same way that a Wither Rose converted soul energy to Wither Skeletons, Wither Skeletons converted soul energy into a Wither. The builders were eventually able to defeat the Wither, and I'm not sure if they made another one. Perhaps they recognized the great danger they unleashed and vowed to never use it again. Or they saw the power of the nether star and determined that it was worth the risk. We don't see nether stars or beacons in chests anywhere. This sort of makes me think that they only built one. That single wither, though, was one of the most unnatural moments in Minecraft history. Okay, I'll be completely honest with you. This is a theory that still has some issues. The biggest problem is the nature of the withering effect is it actually connected to a location in the nether and the fortresses were built there? Or did I get it flipped and something about the construction of the fortresses caused withering? I spent a lot of time thinking about this and I'm not finding evidence for the fortress itself being the cause. The only thing that it could be is the blaze spawner, but we see spawners all over the place without wither effects. 
so I was forced to assume that the location in the nether matters, and that the fortress was built there. It doesn't quite feel right though, like we're taking too big of a jump. Here's what I will say. I don't see the production of the Wither as a cataclysmic event, contrary to some other popular theories. The reason for this is that when we spawn the Wither, nothing like that happens. It's extremely destructive in the short term, but it's defeatable, seemingly without long-term consequences. Rather, I really do think that the Wither is a manifestation of a disease, the same disease that causes withering. The hardest part for me to understand is the Wither Rose, as in the present day the only way to find them is through the Wither itself. However, I have to think that they were natural at one point, and it offers a convenient explanation as to why Wither Skeletons and Blazes only spawn in one place. I also wish I knew exactly how Soul Sand works. It's obvious that Soul Energy is contained within, but I'm not completely sure how the Wither Effect gets it there. Is soul sand like a magnet for soul energy? Or is soul energy all around us, but the soul sand is the only block capable of trapping it? I still don't know for sure. So it's a little bit awkward for me to be here telling you that I don't know how it all works. But I'd rather be honest about this instead of creating some huge convoluted theory and making stuff up to fill the holes. There's this nagging feeling that I'm missing something big, I just don't know what. So I'm going to do something I haven't done yet on this channel. I'm going to ask the community for help. In the description, there's a link to the Discord. If you think you understand the nature of the withering effect and why it only happens in nether fortresses, let me know. I'm not opposed to doing a follow-up video on this. I really just want to find the answer. The puzzle pieces are in front of us. Can we put them together in the right order? Anyways, thanks so much for watching. As always, I enjoy reading your comments, and I appreciate each and every one of my viewers. The growth of this channel has been nothing short of explosive, and I'm really happy to be producing content that people enjoy. Let me know in the comments what you want the next video to be about. There's so much mystery in Minecraft, and I can only hope to slowly uncover it. This has been Retro Gaming Now. Have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next video.